Hello, this is an informative presentation for Speech 2010 by Ada Sashri on Cajun food culture. For Cajuns, food is one of the central themes of their culture. Everything is centered around food, pretty much. At least there's going to be food at every major event. And there's three big food events that I, or three food staples that I'm going to be talking about. The first is the boucherie, the second is the crawfish boil, and the third is gumbo. Gumbo is probably the most famous. Just about everybody's heard of gumbo. I'll be getting to that last. I was lucky enough to marry a Cajun chef, and I've been learning about Cajun culture for the last three years. Um, his family's taken me taken me to some really great Cajun events, such as a boucherie that we did last year, and this year we just over Easter weekend we went to uh, do a big crawfish boil and at the, with the family, which was really fun, really good food. So I'm going to be telling you about those three different Cajun events and what they're like. First of all, what are Cajuns? According to J.D. Ducote, um, who wrote for LouisianaTravel.com in an article, Cajun versus Creole Food, Cajuns were French originally and they moved to Canada. They settled in an area of Canada called Acadia. And then um, the, in the early 1700s, they were actually forced out of Canada, forced to move south all the way down to Louisiana. The central southern area of Louisiana that they settled, they renamed Acadia. So that's where the main Cajun culture is located. Um, when they got there, they mixed the local foods that they were finding all around them with their native French cooking, especially the seafood from the Gulf, which is really, really good, especially the shrimp. So you have a lot of seafood in Cajun cooking, and it's, that's probably part of what makes it so good. Cajun cooking tends to be rich, spicy, and has a lot of seafood. It's really great stuff. Almost all Cajun cooking uses what they call the Holy Trinity, which is celery, bell peppers, and onions. They'll also put a lot of pepper in there, such as black and red pepper and uh, cayenne pepper, cayenne pepper. Cajuns tend to like spicy food. Um, over the weekend, we were able to visit the Tabasco plant. You may know about Tabasco sauce. Um, they only have one factory on the whole planet, and that is in Cajun, Acadiana. It's really close to Lafayette. And we went to tour that plantation there. We we're actually able to get some special sauces you can't get anywhere else, such as the Family Reserve here. We also got this scorpion sauce, which is from the scorpion pepper. You can't get this anywhere else. And they gave me a couple of well, souvenir Tabasco bottles, which is really cute. So Tabasco is typical of, of Cajun seasoning. You know, it's, it can, it's very flavorful, very a little bit spicy sometimes. The first Cajun food event I like to talk about is the boucherie. The boucherie is a big community party, basically. It's a community cookout. Cajuns tended to be pretty poor most of their existence, and so when the community came together and butchered an animal, they used the whole animal. They also, according to Rachel Ross, who wrote for LiveScience.com, who invented the refrigerator, they didn't really have refrigeration until, people generally didn't have it until the 1920s. So from the early 1700s to the 1920s, when you butcher an animal, you had to use the whole thing because it would go bad. So they would kill the hog and then just use all the bits of it right there. The first thing they'd do after slaughtering the hog would be to take the hog, put him on a big table, and then the butcher would take him apart into every single little tiny part you could get off of that pig. Everything was saved, everything was used. The ears, the blood, the, the feet, everything was used. The major things that they would really enjoy and get, get into for the boucherie would be they'd uh, take the skin and the, the belly fat and they'd actually deep fry it and they'd make something called cracklins which is really crunchy flavorful little bits of, of pork popcorn it's called <laughs> which Cajuns really love 
Another thing they would make, which is just staple to Cajun culture now, is called boudin. It's a form of sausage, which is actually made obviously out of the intestines, some of the meat, the liver, and then some seasoned rice. And you put those into sausage links. And those are eaten all the time. They eat them for breakfast, lunch, everything. It's really good stuff. Um, for the boucherie, you'd take the brains, you'd make hogshead cheese, you'd take the blood, you'd take the backbone and make backbone stew, so every bit of the animal is used. And of course, while you're doing this, you're partying. You've got live music, you've got dancing, you've got people sitting around talking. It's really fun. It usually takes up the whole afternoon. The next event that I'd like to talk about is a smaller event. That one, a boucherie is kind of a community thing. Everybody comes together. But this one is more like a family and neighbors kind of an event. And that's the crawfish boil. For a crawfish boil, um, you usually do this around Mardi Gras or around Easter. It's usually done in the spring from late February to early June, somewhere in there. That's crawfish season when the crawfish are raised in large flooded paddy, large flooded fields, kind of like the rice fields. In fact, I think some of the, uh, the fields they use are later used for rice. Um, originally, of course, Cajuns would go out with a bucket and they'd find their crawfish in the swamp. They'd just scoop them into a bucket, take them home. But later on, um, you know, commercial farming of crawfish came about. Now you buy these huge bags of these live crawfish, 30 pound bag is about standard. Take one of these home and there you go, you can have a crawfish bowl. The first thing you do is you have to rinse them because they're muddy. They just, just came right out of the, the flooded patties in the swamp. So you dump them into something you can rinse them in. We used a child swimming pool, which was perfect. Just the right size. Dumped all the crawfish in there, covered it with water, let them self-agitate, because remember these are live crawfish, live crustaceans. And you rinse them probably two, three times. You can even add a little salt, because a crawfish is a freshwater crustacean, and they don't really handle salt well, it actually cause them to clear their system, right, while they're rinsing. So while the, the, um, while the crawfish are in there, in their pool rinsing, you get a huge pot water with some crop some Cajun seasoning in it get that to boiling and what you're going to do first is cook some potatoes and some corn corn on the cob and that forms the vegetables for the dish once that's done and you do that before you do the crawfish you set those aside then um, the once the crawfish are good and clean you scoop them into a wire basket and this is actually going to fit right inside the big pot and that's how they get cooked um, you carry that wire basket over to the, to the pot, drop those right into the boiling water, and they will cook a lot like little tiny lobsters, which is really what they are. <laughs> they look like that anyway. It only takes a few minutes to cook because they're really small. And as soon as they're cooked, you pull them out of the water, and then the tradition is to just dump the crawfish, the potatoes, the corn, everything right down the middle of a table that's been covered in paper, and everybody just pulls up chairs and digs in. And it's a really fun afternoon party kind of thing. You know, you talk, you hang out, all the neighbors, all the friends, all the kids are running around. It's really fun. It's usually done during holidays, so we did it for Easter. The third kind of food event, although it's more of a staple food, that I'd like to talk about is gumbo. Gumbo is considered a winter food, more or less, even though it can be eaten all year round. But it's mostly eaten in the winter, and it's a, it's a hearty stew. Cajuns usually do either a chicken gumbo or a seafood gumbo, and they don't generally mix the two. There's actually two types of gumbo in Louisiana. One of them is a Cajun gumbo, and the other one is a uh, Creole gumbo. And the difference is that Creole gumbo adds tomatoes and okra to their gumbo. The Cajun gumbo doesn't. They're going to have the Holy Trinity, onions, bell pepper, and celery, along with some, some of that pepper and seasoning. And then they're going to use probably um, either either shrimp, crab, oysters, um, seafood, that kind of thing, or they'll use chicken and sausage or pork. And th that'll be a nice stew that will cook down. As soon as that's ready, it's served over a nice scoop of rice, which caused back in the good old days, you know, when, when things were a little bit poorer than 
um, you'd want the food to stretch as far as possible, so you'd put the, ch the rice in to stretch the food. But nowadays, it's just there for the flavor because it's really good. Some people even like potato salad in their gumbo. And of course, when you cook a pot of gumbo at home, you're going to end up, they usually are done in pretty large pots, so you're going to end up with extra. So it's always a good idea to invite friends, neighbors, you know, family over to help share the gumbo so it's another excuse to be, you know, a real good social event so you can hang out with friends. And this is the little social event where it's just a few people. So in conclusion, Cajun culture is centered around food. Food is one of the defining features of the culture. And the best thing, the, the most fun food events are the boucherie, the, the crawfish boil, and of course gumbo. It's just a favorite of mine. I love gumbo. So if you love food, and if you love fun, you really should visit Acadiana. You really should come down and check out the Cajun culture, because their food is absolutely excellent, and so is the companionship and the just the culture of the people. It's a really great time. I'm sure you would enjoy it. Thank you for watching.